My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. Jesus, quite simply today, I would just like to keep you company. I just want to stand by your side. I just want to have the strength to be with you. And to do this, I rely on the presence of Mary, who is standing by, by your side, who has the strength to be with you. And he, she shares that strength with us. When we meditate on your crucifixion, it, it helps us often to meditate on the account given by St. John, the beloved apostles. He tells us, So they took Jesus, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. St. John, who in his Gospel, which we read today at the celebration of the Lord's Passion, St. John's Gospel is very detailed about the Last Supper and about all the events up to that point. But when it comes to the actual crucifixion of our Lord, he is amazingly succinct. In those two sentences which I've just read, he sums up the whole Passion in a certain sense the whole moment of crucifixion. There they crucified him, and with him two others. In those few words, there's a whole ocean of love, uh, you say a universe of divine love is there. And why didn't John say something more to us about the Passion? Probably because it was very difficult for him to write about it. His love for you, Lord, was so great. And yet his testimony is very precious to us because we're conscious that by his side we find Mary, our mother. And that's also how she experienced the Passion. If it was difficult for John to write about it or to go into any detail, what was it like for his mother, for the mother of Christ, and who is our mother also, for Mary? Moreover, she who is the Immaculate Conception is very sensitive to sin, much more sensitive to sin than anybody else, and therefore her suffering was all the greater. We could say to Our Lady with that great prayer of the liturgy, Holy Mother, pierce me through, in my heart each wound renew of my Saviour crucified. We ask to be pierced through, not with a futile pain, but with a love, a love for our Lord, and a realization of how much, Jesus, how much you love us. St. Bernard talks about Our Lady as the one who has true compassion, who really shares in the passion of Jesus. And we can meditate and contemplate Our Lady as she watches our Lord being crucified, being raised up on the cross, hanging there, dehydrated, finding it very hard to breathe, clinging, clinging on to life just about, suffering all that can be suffered. She would have any excuse to go home, to disappear, to faint, to be gone. But no, she stands by our Lord. She stands by the foot of the cross, as St. John, who was also there, tells us. Jesus, on this day, on this Good Friday, I ask you to grant me the grace to accompany you to stand by your side, especially in difficult moments. And I know that I don't have the strength to do that on my own. I certainly don't. But with your grace and with the presence, the company, the intercession of your mother, yes, yes, I will manage it. Yes, I will do it. We contemplate Our Lady as she stands by the foot of the cross. What's going through her heart, her mind? Quite possibly she's recalling when she and Joseph brought the infant Jesus to the temple to present him to the Lord in Jerusalem. And that elderly man, 
who had a prophetic gift, Simeon, came towards them and blessed them and told Our Lady that a sword would pierce her own soul also, just as a lance pierces the heart of Jesus and outflows the saving blood of, and water, so also a sword pierces the heart of Mary. That's how intimate Our Lady's sharing in the passion of Jesus is. That's how close Mary is to Jesus. That's how how faithful she is to Christ. She shares in the passion. It's a true compassion, as St. Bernard says. Jesus, help me through the intercession of Mary to have true compassion, to be with you, to keep you company, to stand by your side by offering up my work today, my family obligations, by being cheerful, also on Good Friday, being cheerful, by being faithful to my spouse or my children or my brothers and sisters or my colleagues. Help me to stand by your side in and through what I have at hand, which generally would be ordinary things, the bits and pieces of doing my work well, resting well, caring for people well. What's going through the heart of Mary at the foot of the cross? So much grief, so much sorrow. Who can even penetrate the depths of it, really? And yet at the same time, there is light and joy and hope in her heart. Because Our Lady firmly believes in the resurrection. We could say that at that moment, at that darkest moment, Our Lady contains within her the faith of the church. And indeed, on Holy Saturday, which is such a quiet and dark day, when you, Jesus, lie lifeless in the tomb, there is one bright light still on earth, and that is the faith of the Blessed Virgin Mary. That's why, in the history of the church, Saturday is always um, a special day of Mary, a day in which we try and have a special uh, devotion to Our Lady. Because on Holy Saturday, on that first Saturday, between when Jesus lies lifeless in the tomb and between Sunday when Jesus rises glorious from the dead, on that quiet day, Our Lady keeps faith. She keeps hope. She keeps loving. She is, you might say, the, um, the beating heart of the church on that Saturday. So Jesus, as we accompany you today alongside Mary, and with the strength, the fortitude she shares with us, we also have hope. We also have joy. We also have the expectation that you will rise again. And that gives us serenity also, even in the midst of great suffering. I met a friend not so long ago, and uh, we were chatting, and they had had a great tragedy in that family not so long before. Uh, and I asked my friend, How's your mother doing? How's your mother coping? And he said, remarkably well. She's doing remarkably well. She says that she places herself at the foot of the cross alongside Mary. And she's well able to cope that way. She stands by Mary and she's well able to cope that way. Now there's great Christian wisdom in that. Our Lady experiences the whole gamut of the suffering going with bereavement and trauma um, and suffering for a loved one. She is truly compassionate. And at the same time, inseparably from that, she knows that new life is about to begin. Unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it bears no fruit. But if it dies, it bears great fruit. Jesus, on this day of your passion, I really do, we really do, want to accompany you. We want to share in your sorrow and in the sorrow of your mother. And we want to share also by anticipation in your joy, in the joy of your mother, which is the joy of the church, which is the joy of the resurrection. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this time of prayer. I ask you for help to put them into effect my Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.